Now real quick I'm going to add in this kind of detail to the end frames as well. Some other triangles that we can delete are the ones going around the inside of the container here because we're never going to see those. So a quick way to select all of these is again just holding down Alt and right clicking near one of the edges. We'll select all of the polygons in that loop and we can delete them, getting rid of another 40 triangles or so. So let's focus on the door. So bringing up the reference, one thing that really characterizes shipping containers is that they have two doors and they also have these vertical bars going along them. So we're going to make that, but we're going to add a little bit of a, of a sci-fi twist here. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to add on sort of a lock to the middle here a lock that specifically is going to be in the shape of a hexagon because nothing says sci-fi like hexagons. There's a few ways to do this. You can do it with either booleans or just with very precise measuring. I'm going to do it with precise measuring because booleans aren't very clean, especially when you're doing modeling for games. It can very badly damage your topology and I try to stay away from it as much as I can. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to add in a cylinder and this cylinder is only going to have six sides. It's going to be a hexagonal prism. I'll scale it down and move it here to the end. going to rotate it 90 degrees in the x-axis, scale it down, it'll be about maybe that big. Now this door is not ever going to open, so it is okay, we do not actually need to model two separate doors that meet up in the middle. We can imply the seam that will be added from there being two doors into the normal map. We can add sort of a bevel that implies there's a vertical seam going up here that this hexagonal locking mechanism is covering up. Make that a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the polygons around the middle and I will hit E to extrude and you'll see something very strange happens. The faces are not extruding along their proper normals. Why? Well, that's because we haven't applied the scale to our model yet. This cylinder still thinks that it is the tall, narrow cylinder that we had at the beginning, but that is no longer the case. When we extrude, the, move, the direction that the polygons will move in is trying to respect that original scale. So as you'll see, this object is very, very small in the z-axis, so the polygons are not moving in our z-axis. So before we can continue, I have to apply the scale. Control A, apply, scale. Now if I extrude those, there we go. Still causing some problems there, that was because I still had individual origins on. There we go. So now we have this hexagon defined in the middle here and we can move the polygons on the outside and model them to line up with our square frame. Now I'm going to scale these a little bit so they're a bit closer to the hexagonal core and I can do that really easily by hitting S shift Y will scale them in every axis but Y and then I'll extrude them again. Now these polygons are actually going to line up with the middle here. 
And there's a reason I'm doing that. It'll make a little bit more sense in a second because I want to add in these, these gaps in the door, but I still want them to be rectangular. And that'll be easier to do if we have a little bit more topology to work with. So I'll flatten these out, S, Z, zero, and then move them up. And while we're here, now we can also delete all of the polygons along the inside. We don't need those either. Change my selection mode to vertices. Again, that's uh, Control-Tab to change your selection mode. Now I'm going to move these up until they're level with this vertice, this vertex up here. And I can do that by changing my snapping mode from increment down here, this little grid icon, from increment down to vertex. And then as I click and drag, if I enable snapping, which you can do with Shift-Tab, then I can snap them to it right there. Do the same thing down here. And then I'm also going to scale these out in the x-axis a little bit. But before I do, I need to make sure that I turn off snapping. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to move them.